And now, A Calvinist Reads Pride and Prejudice. Ah, Pride and Prejudice. I always wanted to read this book. Let's see, where should I start? Page 27 looks pretty good here. Mr. Darcy is all politeness. So let's see, there's a character. His name is Mr. Darcy. The text says he's all politeness. Not only is he the personification of politeness, his essence is politeness. The text says he is all politeness, so he must be present in every act of politeness on earth. Wow, he's everywhere too. But what does this uh, politeness mean? Huh, let me check this dictionary here. It says the word polite is from the Middle English word pullet, meaning polished. Mr. Darcy is all politeness, meaning he's without blemish. This means that no one can or should be able to say anything against Mr. Darcy's character. He is unquestionably good and cannot be otherwise. He is perfect. In order for Mr. Darcy's essence to be politeness, he also must have been uncreated, living outside of time, unchanging. If he could change, then he could not be all politeness, because if he was all politeness, then any change would be away from politeness. This Mr. Darcy's one interesting fellow. It's so interesting that he matches my uh, ideas of perfection. Let's see what else the book says about him. Page 55. Mr. Darcy is not to be laughed at. Ah, interesting. Because Mr. Darcy is uncreated, timeless, and good, we cannot laugh at him. To do so would be to tarnish his perfection. We should not and cannot laugh at Mr. Darcy. This is all making so much sense. Page 80. Mr. Bingley, he is a sweet-tempered, amiable, charming man. He cannot know what Mr. Darcy is. What the text is saying is that even creatures who think they are good cannot know Mr. Darcy. We, as human beings, are depraved. We cannot know good. Mr. Darcy, being good, is unknowable and incomprehensible. This is part of his perfection, his perfect essence. We, as imperfect creatures, cannot know what is pure perfection and infinite. It is beyond our comprehension. This book is so good. Let's see what else it says. Page 88. I do not know the particulars, but I know very well that Mr. Darcy is not in the least to blame. This is very interesting as well. It appears because Mr. Darcy is perfection that he cannot ever be blamed for any wrong. Because he's perfection, no one can ever question his actions. To do so would be to impugn his perfect character. Hey husband, what are you up to? I'm just reading Pride and Prejudice. Oh, I love that book. My favorite part's when Mr. Darcy condescendingly proposes to Elizabeth and she rejects him. So then he begins to change and humble himself, and then she begins to love him. That never happened in the book. You see on page 88 it says Mr. Darcy is not to be blamed. And on page 27 here it says that Mr. Darcy is all politeness. Do you even know what politeness means? Yeah, it just means he's cordial. But I'm referring to events in chapter 11 of the second half of the book. You obviously don't understand what politeness means. And the events you're talking about are definitely metaphorical. How can Mr. Darcy be perfect, unknowable, and unchangeable if he responds to the actions of Elizabeth? That just defies his acity. What? I'm talking about the incommunicable attributes of Mr. Darcy. Perhaps you don't know what the book says. Mr. Darcy cannot be known. Mr. Darcy cannot be blamed. Mr. Darcy cannot be laughed at. Mr. Darcy is all politeness. You do know what all means, right? I'm gonna go back downstairs.